Dead. All right, Jordan, they did a poll and asked people, why do you play video games? What do you think is the number one reason that people play video games? Uh, that they would say <laughs> it's fun. No. <laughs> what actually, was no. actually philosophical? Unwind and stress relief. Oh, okay. And then uh, number two will give you hope. Creation, imagination, and self-expression. Just needs to be directed towards building civilization. <laughs> And so if we could do that, we'd be on track. Welcome everyone to the Blimey Cow podcast. Every single Friday, we try and make the world a little less messy. We, we're trying, Josh. We're just trying. We're out here. <laughs> we're trying. We, we out here. My name is Jordan. And I'm Josh, hoping that you will join us for Blimey Con 2024, which is happening September 20th to the 22nd of this year. And we are so excited. We're, we're doing camp. We're going to camp. We are. We're going I, to. I'm so pumped about it. Lots of games, laser tag, zip lining. Uh, sand castles, Vo like, no, sand castles bonfires, volleyball. <laughs> we're going to have a blast and we're going to record a live episode of Christian Meme Review. We've had a yes. lot more people sign up than I expected. I had another guy reach out to me who I met at Kroger a while back. Is he going to come? He, he was like uh, putting stuff on the shelves. He didn't work for Kroger, but he's like, you know. Sure. He's a stalker. Yeah. For a and company. Great guy. Yeah. Talked to him for a while one day, and so we we messed back and forth on Instagram, and he was like, "Dude, I think I'm gonna be able to come to BlimeyCon." So I for hope he, I hope he shows up. I suspect that um, because we're doing it at a, at a camp, that we'll have a lot of locals that sign up kind of last minute. Yeah. Uh, wants people to know how the summer is going to go or whatever, but even just people that are like actually like uh, planning their year around it. Uh, this is going to be yeah. their summer trip or their, I guess now their fall trip. It's in September. But yeah. Anyways, we would love to have you. BlimeyCow.com slash BlimeyCon 2024. Uh, tickets go up in price in June. So get those tickets now. It's going to be awesome. We didn't get to do BlimeyCon last year. So did we do it the year before? We did. Yeah, and somebody got married from that. That's true. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Two people got married uh, oh, after right. the first Blimey Con too. Yeah, not this year, not last year, but the year before that, the last Blimey Con. Two people got two 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 couples that's got married. That's true. Who are you thinking of? Sampy and Christy, and then uh, Landon and Melanie. No, Did from they last, met at from last year. Yeah. Oh, and them too. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. The people who just moved close to us. That's so true. There have been a lot of people that, that yeah, and met they, for and the then, first time at BlimeyCon. And then one guy I was having these still theological conversations with, he met somebody there at BlimeyCon and they got married. That's right, man. So many people, we can't even keep track of all of it. At least four couples. Yeah. Don't come to BlimeyCon expecting <laughs> to meet your future spouse. But if you do, don't be surprised. Okay. <laughs> hey, if you want a free Blimey Cow t-shirt, then head over to supportblimeycow.com. When you join, you get a free Blimey Cow shirt as our way of saying thank you. We do exclusive video content like bonus podcasts. Yeah bonus messages, all kinds of stuff. So head over to supportblimeycow.com today to join the best community on the internet where I am currently hosting a game of Survivor. That's right. You wouldn't know anything about that. No. But uh, I am hosting a game of Survivor right now. And it's going really it well. Fun? It's fun? You having a fun time? Yeah, I'm having a really fun you time. You stressed out? People no. direct messaging you too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. Uh, it's been awesome. I got my spreadsheet. Uh, look, I am a... Uh, I, I'm, spread a, king I'm, God. A, I'm a veteran of Sp hosting I spread, Survivor. <laughs> I said spread king God. Spread, spread king, king God? Spread. What did you say? <laughs> I meant spread sheet God. God. <laughs> spread, spread king, spread king God. God. Tell us about the clips, Jordan. Yeah, so if you if you go to uh, BlimeyCon 2024, you can sign up for free ticket. <laughs> you can, no, go to YouTube.com slash at clips because there you don't have this pesky time commitment that we all despise. I don't despise it. <laughs> but some people need the clips. They need the so short they clips. Can, they can watch the show yes. in shorter form for themselves. Thank you so much to Clean Fiction for sponsoring this episode of our podcast. This print and digital magazine strives to place amazing clean fiction in the hands of those who would enjoy it. They specialize in indie fiction and small presses, so you'll always be finding out about new books that you wouldn't have heard about otherwise. If you're interested in reading a Christian-based publication that reviews and promotes both religious fiction as well as clean secular fiction, Christian Fiction is the magazine 
that you didn't know that you needed, but you will love. These pages contain book reviews from genre specific reviewers. Plus there are really cool serial series from independent authors. They have devotions, poetry, and articles about various missions as well. So there's all kinds of stuff to check out from Clean Fiction. Go to cleanfictionmagazine.com to get plugged into this amazing community that will be your new favorite thing in the world. Check it out. Top stories. Top stories, that's right. Top stories. Don't forget, this is the last week that this podcast is going to be here on this channel. Yes, so if you want to continue enjoying the show that will be consistent, you need to go and subscribe to Blimey. at Blimey Cow Podcast. Yes, that's where you need to go. We'll have that linked in the description. I'll try to remember to put a card up as well. Go subscribe to that channel, at Blimey Cow Podcast. It's going to be this show, just on a different channel. We're going to do like an update video next week to let, because I think there's still, there's, I mean, obviously there's a lot of people that watch our channel, but yeah. don't watch this show. So they don't know right. about any of this. And we're also going to be making some changes to what kinds of videos we post and stuff because Jordan and Sarah are getting ready to have their baby. Yeah. Uh, so things will change for a little while, but yes. then they'll go a little more back to normal, but still be different, Josh. A little different. And so we'll, we'll uh, talk about that. Lots of changes around here, Jordan. Oh, I know. Man, it's, it's, it's just wild. Sarah's walking around. She's like super prego now. Just trying to... Still surreal to me. Yeah, I know. That you guys are having a baby. I really... I, I still can't believe it. It's just... It's just sitting in there. <laughs> it's just chilling. <laughs> it's crazy because, you know, of the her... The placenta previous situation. Yeah. He's like constantly sitting like... Just like a log. Yeah. So it's just jutting, you know, oh. just absolutely jutting out her side. Do you, can so you I feel can feel his head. Stuff? Yeah. I mean, it's like you can see his head just jolt yeah. just out. Have you constantly. seen? Does he? Have you seen him move at all? Like and watch her stomach move? Have you seen? I that? haven't watched her stomach move, but I felt okay. him when he moves around. Yeah. So that's cool. I don't think he's got like an incredible amount of room or something. Yeah. He moves around a lot, but I've he's not like shifting big position yeah like he's not like oh now i'm like this now i'm like this sweet, it's kind of like sweet baby boy he has a very specific way that he sits and i think it's because the placenta is in the wrong place yeah so, so he's just kind which of is strong. honestly good that he's not moving and like maybe doesn't have enough room to move that way because then he could start kicking in the wrong spot and then when then we're going oh, to right. the hospital sooner yeah oh my lord um yeah it, it's so trippy coming over here and there's like baby stuff kind of littered around the house. And I'm like, man, this yeah. is really going to happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> Having a baby here pretty soon. Is it starting to feel real? No. <laughs> I'm like downstairs. I'm trying to fix our living room downstairs in time. You know, I believe in my heart that will get done in time. We're, we still got to build the tree house. And the tree house before the be baby gets here. Before the baby gets here. <laughs> so that's, you know. Yeah, but I think that once once I have that done, I will be like, now yeah. the house it feels ready. Okay. But now I feel like I'm kind of distracting myself with doing all this drywall and stuff down there. And then I come upstairs and, you know, Sarah's pregnant. I like feel the baby. I'm like, it just still just doesn't feel like this is like yeah. absolutely real yet. But we have just a little ways to go. Man, when 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 he comes out and you hold him for the first time, it's gonna feel real, real, yeah, real exactly. fast. Real, real, real fast. Real, real, real fast. Spread King God. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the message. All right, let's do the message. Yeah. Hello, Jordan and Josh, I'll add. I am a Christian who is a self-taught video editor, so I took up a job a few months ago for a freelancer who takes sponsorships and record and records. That's the English language for you. <laughs> Records and record Records. advertisements. Problem is, I can't quite morally discern whether or not I should be editing some of these advertisements. I set a boundary that I wouldn't edit any explicitly illicit content, but I have been editing ads for gambling mobile apps and crappy superhero adventure 3D games that have questionable advertising campaigns. I would love to enter the Christian media space and edit content that I'm morally aligned with, and I cannot help but feel like editing these types of videos is just feeding into the brain rot and time-wasting mentality the internet has embraced and preying on those who are irresponsible with their time or finances. 
So here's the issue. I am getting engaged in the fall and my boss is going full time into this business in a couple of months. So his income and ability to support his family will rely on my ability to continue working on a job. Uh, I feel very morally odd about continuing <laughs> morally odd. I have, I'm gonna have to use that. I have built up a very good relationship with my boss as well. Do I continue working for my boss into engagement and marriage to make the extra money and save him the struggle of needing to find a new editor right before he goes full time? Or do I enter a different editing job that I align with morally the moment I get the chance? Long time Blimey Cow lover. Okay, uh, sure, this is odd morally. Odd or morally, morally odd. Morally odd. <laughs> you know, I've wondered the same thing because I thought, oh, you know, you get, I can edit videos. Oh, I go out and get a job. Like, if you're not doing freelance stuff, like, this sounds like this is actually not really freelance. This is like actually like a, th this, this is, is a, his job. this is yeah. the job. You know, I've always wondered that. Like, what, what happens if they're like, hey, edit the girl? <laughs> or you lose your job. Yeah. I'd be like, I guess I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say that. Personally, I'm done. Yeah. I will figure something else out. Yeah. I now, will. that's always a little gray, though, because, like, it starts with the gambling apps, <laughs> which that would have been my line already. I would have been done. Then it goes to the superhero adventure. I would have let that slide. <laughs> superhero adventure 3D? Yeah, I, yeah. That would have slid. Unless it was, like, explicitly, they're like throwing in your face i'm like i guys i'm done I, but that's just me i got a lot of guys i'm done moments you know what i mean like i don't know if that's good or bad i think that yeah i think his issue is is it's like the kinds of games he's doing the ads for are like you know games where if you're playing a, a free game on your phone and there's an ad for a game that pops up it's like those <laughs> yeah. kind of games yeah and he's yeah you, you know where it's just very like pay to play or like yeah I, I, I get that, dude. I get I get feeling uncomfortable about that. And I'm trying to decide why I still say, just do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody's going to edit it. You know? Uh, I, That's not a good reasoning. I know it's letting not. You know I'm, that, I, so. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, do what you got to do for this time that you're doing it. You know, this is what's in your placed in your path i mean you know if, if if they're wanting you to do something that just really feels like i i just feel completely wrong about this that's one thing but if you know if you're just they're a little like game ads but oftentimes what happens in these game ads josh yeah they've always got some like sexually explicit girl that's to true. try and draw the young men in yeah i, I couldn't do it I, I wouldn't care what i lost I, yeah, I she, and she's it. always like moving like this oh you ever seen in the same like, 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 yeah. the, I can just see it in my head. Yeah. It's like it's like some sort of like just little, like top down uh yes. like tower defense type game, but all of a sudden this this uh scantily clad this scantily clad woman just bounces into the shot and she's moving like she's not even like fully animated. It's just like her arms are moving. Yeah, it's all and could. it's like what in the world <laughs> but it's enough. I mean, to I, yeah, works. this got my attention, but not like to play the game. It's just like why did well, why is, is she here? <laughs> See, when he says that, I think that that's what he means. And 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 to me, I couldn't personally. I, I couldn't do that. I, that's that, what's that, going yeah, on. Yeah, sure. Okay, if that's what's going on, then <laughs> sure. Yeah. If but, it's just like I don't know, like I, you can also envision like it's like that the slots game where it's like. <laughs> ting, ting, ting. Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah. But it's, he's like, now it's the girl. <laughs> Never. Put her in the put her in the shot. <laughs> yeah. Christopher Nolan in the in, in Oppenheimer. <laughs> in Oppenheimer. <laughs> Film her. The Illuminati says, now the girl. <laughs> He's like, but I I'm a I, I have my own creative vision. No, we know about your life. You have never put the girl in the video. <laughs> now put the girl in the video. I don't know, Josh. It's if we saw the ad, this is like always what happens in messages. I if know. I could see the ad. <laughs> if the guy ad would walk in here, here, I could tell you in five seconds. Yeah. If this was okay or not. But without the ad, it is hard to know. But you know, each person has their own moral compass. Just in general though, if it was just like this these uh like gambling type like game, like poker type games or whatever or I don't know, like pay to play games. If somebody said, "Hey, I'll I'll pay you to edit these little clips for me," would you do it? I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I could. I, I personally, and I'm saying I don't even know if that's good or bad. I yeah. just there's something in me. I just yeah. this, I just get this gut kind of thing, and I'm like, I I just can't do it, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
I don't know. I think I want to say yes, but since I, but now that I'm thinking about, it, let me add, let me think if I've never been asked to do that kind of thing. If I was asked to do that, what would you do? I think maybe if it was like, hey, shoot, I really need this done, and I I lost my editor, and could you just do it? I'll pay you to do it. And it was like, okay, I know this is a one time thing, right. sure. But if it was like, this is gonna be your new career. If this is like. You you see in your career, I'm doing this every day yeah. for, for the next two years. If yeah, the, I'm if, like, no. If, if the only reason I'm doing this is because it's going to lead to more work like this, then no, I, I don't think I could do it. So I, maybe there's an answer in there somewhere for yeah, you, buddy. I don't helped. know. I don't know. This is tough. Well, we're video editors, you know, so yeah, that's things true. you got to think about. In patients with depression, worsening of depression, including risk of suicide, may occur. Jordan, did you know that having a tattoo could increase your risk of developing a type of cancer by 21%? A new study has found, okay, it's lymphoma. No. You have a 21% higher chance of getting lymphoma from a, from a tattoo. That rings true. I've always felt that something about injecting ink inside of your skin can't be good for you. Well, is the ink, not that I'm big into regulations, but is the ink regulated? You're not <laughs> eating it. So, like, what kind of heavy metals are in that? Yeah. Like, where, where else would you just poke a hole into yourself and just start injecting... And you just go to some random a place. Goo. Yeah, you don't just, ask questions about what the material is. Yeah. Nobody does. Who goes to a tattoo parlor and says, hey, can I have like the ingredients list of what's in this <laughs> ink? Yeah. Nobody does that. Seed oils. <laughs> yeah, <they're, it's> like, <laughs> well, if it's seed oils, who cares? Because we're already eating those anyways. <laughs> so, like, oh, it's just seed oils? <laughs> I had okay. like three or four <laughs> pounds of that for breakfast. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> That's just further confirmation that the only time I will get a tattoo is when I'm 100. Oh, okay, yeah. What's your tattoo going to be? It'll just say my birthday, and then it'll say the date that I turned 100. It just, it's just a cool idea. You know, September 30th, 1991, and then September 30th, what is 2091? It's pretty yeah. cool. I just ran into a 100-year-old man the other day. How'd that go? Great. He was still working on his farm. I was of course he was. I was hauling some hay. With Eddie helping him because he some needed hay. some hay, so we're on the back of it of the. I'm on the back of the his uh, trailer as he's pulling it, and I'm jumping out. I'm getting the hay bales. We're throwing it on the thing, and I was. Uh, the, they were like, "There's a the guy who owns this farm is 100 years old." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "I got to see this guy." He come he d drove away. I didn't see. I was like, "Dang it!" I always like to see what they look like. Right, and I was they like, always look good. Yeah, and I asked one guy. I was like, "What do you look at?" Oh, he looked like he was 100. I was like, so then the guy comes back. And uh, he didn't say anything, but I saw him in the truck, and he stopped for a second. The guy looks like he's, I don't know, he looks like he was 80. People who look like they're 100 don't make it to 100. Exactly. If you look like you're 100, you're really 80. Yeah. If, you, if, you're, if you've made it to 100, you look like you're 80. Did I say that the same way? If you're 80, yes. you look like you're 100 and then you die. Yeah. If you're 100, <laughs> you look like you're 80 and then you never make it to that right. last step because your body just shuts down. Sometimes you see like these news articles of like these frail old women, like she's celebrating her 104th birthday and you're like, well, either something <laughs> happened in those last four years and she's looking yeah. pretty bad. But I think sometimes you, you, the, these, uh, the, these women just hit the gene pool. Yeah, uh, the genetic lottery, yeah, yeah. and they just do look old. But if you see like an old hundred year old man, he made it that far yeah. because he uh, was active, and he <laughs> yeah, I don't think that guy had any tattoos either. <laughs> I didn't see any. He had his. Arm and if out he the did, window. they were hideous. They're hideous at this point. They're saggy and yeah, well, it was just green like a, you know, and... a little from Vietnam, just like a little cartoon or something. <laughs> they all got. That's what he had. No, but if oh, he did, okay. it would only be a small one. You know, now you've got these guys who are out here, and they've got, like, their whole arms, and they think they're so cool, and their whole bodies. I don't understand It's like, it. dude, I hope you don't get something, man. I get, you know, I, I get, I would never do it. I would never do it, but I, I understand. I have friends uh, who, you know, will get a, get a single tattoo to commemorate something, whether a good thing or, like, a, like a sad thing they want yeah, exactly. to, to uh, have, hold a memory of. I, I do get that, yeah. but the sleeve, where it's just like an, an art at this point, like, and I, I respect the art. Exactly. I like Ink Master as much as the next guy. That's what I'm saying. I love that show. Dad, I've watched Dad loves it Dad too. Loves Dad show. should get a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is just ask about the ingredients <laughs> and then just get a small one. 
Yeah. Don't get the whole kit and yeah. caboodle. Just yeah. get a little bit and... Do we have long-term data on people with, with sleeves? Have, do, I don't think do, so. Do, are there any old people that have sleeves? No, no. Not yet? Not yet. <laughs> they'll know. come it's soon <laughs> enough. Not yet. Not yet. All right, Jordan texted me freaking out. I think it was yesterday. Was this days, yesterday? Two days ago. Two days ago? Or Jordan, no, it was yesterday, it but was I, yesterday. I had been researching it for oh, the okay. day before. <laughs> George did a day of research. He's like, okay, now I'm ready to tell Josh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So you remember that missing plane that happened? And I mean, obviously, you remember, I already told you. But there was, if you were out there remember about that missing plane that happened in 2014. The Malaysian plane. Yeah. Among the greatest aviation mysteries of all time. MH370 disappeared. The Malaysia Airlines passenger plane and all 239 people on board never seen again. And and we just can't find it. We don't know where it went. It's just gone. It's gone. What and happened? What happened to it? And they're looking and everything. Well, some video right after that surfaced, like was sent to this guy on YouTube, like a week after that, or like a couple days after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a screen recording of a video that looked like it was from the military. Sent it to this guy. The guy didn't post it for like uh, like two months because I don't think he believed it. You know what I mean? But then probably got a little convinced like, hey, this is actually the guy maybe was talking to him. So he actually posted the video on YouTube. And then uh, the video, I guess, gets shown a lot by a lot of people and I've, I've, it took me 10 years to finally see this video, Josh. And you're out looking for this. Stuff. And I'm looking for this stuff. How could I not have seen this ever? Never heard of it one time. Somebody uh, out there on Instagram was like, hey, Jordan, I listened to the podcast. I really think that you would like this other podcast uh, called Blurry Creatures. And it's basically, it's these guys who like to talk about just these, like, you know, the Bigfoot footage or mm -hmm. stuff like that. But they, it's, it's, it's actually very interesting. They come at it through, like, a Christian perspective. Oh. Of like, hey, if this is real, like, if we, they actually do deep research into, like, who are the craziest of the crazy people who are, like, not crazy as in a bad way, but they're, like, dedicating their entire lives to psychoanalyzing the 60 second footage of Bigfoot. And, like, seeing how his feet flex compared yeah. to a human where his his knee is and how his thigh flexes and compared to this and like anatomically like diagnosis this is this yeah. is real yeah and so their whole thing is like okay well so if this is real like how does this work with our christian faith how does like this <laughs> and so it's, it's like what i do all day long so i was like this is the only and it happens these guys are from nashville you got to get on their show. Them. You got to get on their show. I have nothing to say. Oh. But anyway, so they were taught they got the guy on who's like kind of heading up this whole thing about analyze psychoanalyzing this footage to death. Oh. And it's a it will have the video playing on the screen, but it's the airplane, the Malaysian airplane comes in, then you know three orbs start floating around it in this like triangulation pattern. And then the the, the, oh. the plane just blips away. It's gone. And it's, it, it, and you think, okay, it's just a little crappy video. Like, it's got to be fake, right? That's what I thought when I saw this. I've looked, again, I've looked at so much stuff in my life. I just, I know it's fake. I know stuff is fake. And so it's like, oh, they, well, imagine. And so I like watching it, knowing full well that, all right, I can't convince myself this is true. But with this, when I really looked into it a lot more, it's like, dude, this actually feels real. Like, it, 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 it. I, I both hope it is real and that it isn't real. But the thought is that, this sounds so nutty, but the thought is that these, that the United States military has uh, these weapons where they can actually just blip stuff into a wormhole and send it someplace else. Which sounds crazy until you realize that <laughs> you would need superconductivity to be able to do this. Okay, that's just kind of like a thing. They've got it. They've got They're that. They're hiding it from us. Right. They've got that, apparently, if this is real. But the thing that is kind of convincing, even if you think the video is faked, even though it's it's actually a satellite video, that's why it looks kind of weird because it's like looking down on a plane. So you're literally looking down on a plane and all these cumulus clouds and stuff like that. But it's like, 
two two images that can be stitched together. They're all they're both slightly offset angles. It's the, it's, it would be the most crazy and to, to and to produce this in like two days. It's like the craziest uh, thing to fake. Two fake videos that are slightly offset, two completely different angles though. And when you put them together, it creates a 3D image that you can look at through glasses or whatever, and it like makes like a 3D thing that like they would look at. There's also another layer, uh, another video from a drone that's a, um, you know, proven drone. This is what that drone footage looks like of the plane. It's like a thermal uh -huh. view of the plane, uh, just getting blipped out into oblivion through a wormhole, you know? Uh, but the thing that's really convincing, if you don't believe the videos, <laughs> <laughs> which I do, if you don't believe the videos, the weird thing is that 20 of the people that were on that plane were some of the top scientists in superconductivity. And they just got blipped off the map. Use their own technology against, against them. them, Josh. They're gone. They used their own technology against them. Why? Why would now, they don't, Wouldn't you normally spread those people out over multiple yes. pl multiple planes? This is a real thing that happens. You don't fly all of your top people on all of the same planes. Like 20 people on, pl on one plane is just idiotic. Normally they would like spread this out. Five people on this one, five yeah. people on this one. They throw 20 people on the plane and then blip it out of existence. That's why you don't do it because you get blipped out of the <laughs> sky get, like you, it's nothing. Exactly. So they think that, the, they think that uh, the plane got blipped and just popped up somewhere else the theory, on planet Earth in the yeah. same time and space or just... Well, no, sometime that there would be time dilation because you, uh, you would be going faster than the speed of light. I think all this stuff sounds so nutty until you realize that like there, there is science out there that this, this literally can exist. Like this isn't some, even if the video is not real, this kind of thing can happen. This isn't like this thing to laugh at. Like it actually probably will exist at, at some point if it doesn't already. So just seeing that video, seeing how all those different camera angles, like you can play them all at the same time. Like somebody would have had to have made a 3D rendering and then like just changed the angles and then, but then like, the, then there's drone footage of, a, of the same kind of drone and you can see, no, that drone footage from that that was filming that airplane, it, it is the same drone footage. It's just, uh, you know, it's the same make and model. It's just this one caught the picture of, of the airplane getting blipped. And then the other one is just filming other stuff, but like they're acting, they're reacting the exact same way. The drone footage at the end looks like it's like a, a cartoon, the way that it just pops and has that little like cloud that appears for a well, second the, the interesting thing is like what's funny is when you look at the video it's it's like somebody who made that would have had to have known almost like scientifically like what it would kind hmm. of look like if if that did happen because on the thermal layer of that it would be black it, w it wouldn't be like you would think oh maybe it's like an explosion of some sort on the thermal level of it but it, but it would you would think it would I don't know who knows? Who knows if it's real, but it's interesting. If it is real, uh, then um, that's both gives me hope and doesn't have to. <laughs> They're hiding it. superconductivity from me. Research from us. Yeah, I know. That's a problem. Look, as soon as we have superconductivity at a room temperature, uh, that's game over for everybody. For anybody yeah. that wants to uh, keep you captive. To, you can't be enslaved if you have free you, energy. You can have free food. You can have free everything. At that point, the government would just have to charge you for living. At that point, the government would pay, would, would, would you, they would pay you. It's like, hey, look, we'll pay you if you let us stay in charge. Yeah, we'll give you, we'll pay you a lot of money. <laughs> That's true. Reverse tax. That sounds yeah. nice. Man, imagine that. That would be great. Okay, just give us some, keep, keep showing us legitimacy we'll pay mm -hmm. you a thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. all right anybody who's interested in just like looking that up the we'll, we'll, i'll uh, send josh the link of uh blurry creatures this episode and also uh the guy on twitter will post his twitter account you can just look at that uh it's it's interesting to just to just listen to him talk because it's pretty convincing when you listen it seems it seems crazy but it also seems a little bit convincing too <sighs>
one of our craziest conspiracy theories <sighs> yet. Know. So I was thinking, wow, imagine if this technology really is real. Uh, and then I thought that would just be a crazy to like be to sit in a room with a room temperature superconductor, and it's just it would just be the craziest thing. You got these little microchips of superconductivity that can just power things. And I thought, man, that'd be so crazy. And then I thought, but which is crazier? Superconductivity and the thought of like free energy or the fact that we as humans can figure this stuff out. Like we are a person who started with like no knowledge and then all of a sudden we can like have this thing that just is like a it, it never stops it we can make all this crazy stuff like go into wormholes and disappear and like mm -hmm. pop up other places and stuff like that i thought wow that's like we're we're like the the craziest things on earth it's not superconductivity <laughs> it's like our brains are we don't even know how that works we almost know how superconductivity probably works more than our brain does and and you know i always think like anytime i'm driving on my street and i see like a the animals get hit constantly on my road. Mm -hmm. Squirrels massacred left and right. <laughs> I and saw a dead squirrel. A crow was you? eating it on the way up. Yep. I yeah, you see them constantly, and I and you see these creatures that you know, seemingly that we've ever found only exist on this one planet on Earth, just squashed in the middle of the road. And I think, like one of the most in, incredible inventions. Is this this squirrel that's just squashed on the ground? The crows walk coming up and just eating it. It's gone. <laughs> but like, we can't make it. We right. can't create this 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 can't crazy creature that's crawling everywhere and like yeah. planting seeds places and like living in trees and is able to survive and have babies and all this stuff. Like, it's just so amazing. And the thing's just squashed there on the ground. And nobody gives a, a d. <laughs> and then I just thought, man, it's like we're the same way. We're, we're like so amazed about like, wow, can you imagine if about all the super con connectivity and like, you know, these orbs that can blip people into like wormholes <laughs> and send them to other places. And it's like, yeah, but like, dude, how cool is it that, that like we exist? Yeah. That like you take that same energy of like being hyped about that stuff and think, wow, that annoying person that you see at the grocery store who like, y y you're like, I, I'm always talking about myself. Like they don't, they won't even look up at me. They're like, <laughs> they're still triple masked and they won't even like talk <laughs> to me at all. You just think, dude, this is crazy. These people, it's like every person is like, so it's like more valuable than like this, the most crazy technology that we can think of. And I'm thinking it's because like we, how can we, we were, we were struggling to build fires yeah. and then all of a sudden we're like able to like, come up with generations to finally be able to like do this super connectivity stuff like maybe it's like i don't know it's just nuts so you know just amazing how like just valuable people are just the most amazing things on the in the world yeah. the universe is us yeah just our ability to like actually reason through things it is very interesting separates us from every other creature on this planet or you just see your dog walking around the yard and you just think, this is the only thing that's like that in the whole universe that we can see. The only thing. You j it makes every moment feel like it's worth more or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, There's nowhere else that you can go in the universe from our perspective at this point and see my dog Tucker walking in the yard, like an animal walking in a yard. And we've got all these like all this... Uh, stuff we're worried about the economy or government and all this stuff but it's the only place in the world that in the whole universe that we can see that is you can just be sitting in your yard and see your dog walk walking it's the only it's so common to us but it's like if you if you just happen to be a fly on a wall in the whole universe and you're just flying around and you just there's nothing and you just think what the yeah. what is this but it's cool. I can see perspectives of stuff. If I get out far enough, it takes me trillions of years, but I can see something. And then one day you just happen upon the earth and it's like, what? What is this?
what is this place? You wouldn't even know. You would just think that everything else was normal. To us, this is normal and everything else is foreign. Right. But to every other thing that's out there, that's normal. And this is like the most crazy one atom in a whole like hundreds of trillions that's like this. It's like crazy. if we have all of our, our atoms in our body and then like just one has a whole colony of humans on it or yeah. of people and it's just like how okay how did that get there thank you for sharing that it's wild it really is i found this article that was talking about how running clubs have re replaced dating apps hmm. for for women who are like that's that's lo smart lo looking for guys in their area uh and you know when i was running my marathon you know, people always use the exact same signs. There must be some website like dumbmarathonsigns.com or something. Don't go there. But I saw one that actually like genuinely made me laugh. It said, uh, I forget what the popular dating site is. Tinder? It was like Tinder, Bumble, Bumble, or Hinge or something. I don't know. But it just said something like, forget Hinge. What's your Strava? And it was just this woman like oh, just holding smart. up this sign. And I, that, that's a funny joke. Like she's saying, "Hey, I don't want to date these these losers. I want to date a guy who's in shape. I want to date a guy who's out here running this marathon." I thought that was funny. I was encouraged by that. Uh, I was encouraged because you know we we were well out of the dating scene by the time. Uh, well, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah, you were out by the time it was a couple years. There were there there really this did not exist when Kelly and I were dating. I guess this had kind of just started maybe when you before you and I Sarah got even, married. No, I don't, maybe. What maybe year did y'all get married? Strange. Happy anniversary, by the way. Yeah, guys, just celebrate their uh, seventh yeah, anniversary. Uh, yeah. Well, we got married in 2017. There, there were certainly dating apps by then, but maybe oh, not yeah. to the degree that they are now. I mean, certainly not. No, no. It would have still been a little bit weird if you had been on that. I didn't yeah. even know about them. Nobody, uh, yeah, I remember that transition from it being a thing like, we met on a dating site to like, oh yeah, we met on Tinder. Yeah. The, just like the, the, just the straight, it went from an awkward thing to like, this is just a fact. This yeah, is where people yeah, meet yeah. now. It's not awkward or weird. Uh but at the same time, uh, you know, it, I think that while society has become more comfortable with it, uh, we're also noticing the pitfalls of it mm -hmm. to the degree that people are starting to say, hey, maybe maybe I should have like an in real life club related yeah. to something I enjoy doing. Well, and it's something that girls do, too, because when I'm when I do cycling it's it's it really is a bonding thing because you know you're going through something together especially yeah. with cycling because it's kind of dangerous with running it's great because you get to talk to each other more i feel like cycling it's so intense sometimes that you right. can't really talk and and you, you well know, you're, you're not really cycling next to somebody yeah. anyway they're normally behind rarely you in front of you yeah um so and it's so loud because it's so windy but you get to know everybody really well if you do it for long enough but there's only normally ever like really like one girl who might okay. be there. And she might stay there for a little bit and not be there the whole time. Yeah. Uh, and then she cuts off and kind of does her own thing. Yeah. Uh, but with running, I feel like that's a great, great thing for both men and women to. Yeah. I feel like, oh, I mean, clearly a lot of women run. I, yeah, I, I wonder what the what the ratio would be. I have to look at my marathon and see like how many women were signed up versus men. But you know, in my neighborhood and stuff, I, if I see people out running, it's it's normally women. I would say. Yeah, exactly. But if you see somebody cycling, it's normally a man. Right. Uh, you'll see a woman every once in a while. But it, mm -hmm. you're right. That's that's. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I've wondered that. I real. I don't know. It's always been that way. Yeah. But running's very popular. Uh, I think it's it's a good thing too because. In cycling, that gap of strength between men and women naturally sure. can happen a lot sooner. Yeah. And then, and so me, who hasn't really ridden that much, I was getting dropped by you know, some girls who were very into the sport. Oh, interesting. And then two months later, oh. like it was, you know, they're really struggling to keep up. And that was yeah. just two months. Right. With running, I feel like, okay, very, you know. Right. That's that gap is way, way, yeah. way less. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if a, if a woman runs a lot, she's going to be very lean. And even I noticed, like, as I ran more and lost weight, it became a lot easier to run. Yeah. 
But women just kind of have that natural advantage of already being uh, uh, smaller, usually. Yeah, it, it, go it, out and run a nice it, pace. I never really thought about that. Yeah, nine, ten minute mile. Yeah. yeah. I, I always just compare everything to cycling. Cycling is yeah, just, sure. you know, you're just on these small roads and you're, that's everyone's a good point. scared they're going to die all the right. time. So it's just, there's this intensity to it that's just, yeah. you can't really have meaningful, you couldn't, it would be hard to meet your girlfriend yeah. on that. It, you would, it would be weird. Maybe, maybe if you were doing like a, um, um, mountain biking or something like yeah, that. Yeah, more of trail stuff, you would yeah. have an easier time to, I mean, even that's, that's a lot of that single sure. track, but it would just depend on how big the trail was. Yeah. But maybe that's, that's more of like a nice camaraderie thing. That's what I'm saying. mountain biking. Because the, then you're stopping, you're looking up at things. That, we should go mountain, we should get mountain bikes and go mountain I, biking sometime. I've thought of it. That would be really I'm almost fun. over regular road it's 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 too serious. I've been in it for so long. It's it's way like people guys take it way too seriously. Yeah. Mountain biking uh is way way more relaxed. It feels more casual. It but but more it can like, be serious if you want it yeah. to be, I guess, but you don't have it doesn't it's no. not the Mountain norm. bikers make fun of road cyclists for okay. being really snooty. And then a lot of them are to be honest, a lot of them are. Elliot was questioning me about my uh, we've been cleaning out the uh garage and stuff. And uh, Elliot was questioning me about my bicycle. He saw it for the first time. He's like, Daddy, you got a bicycle? <laughs> I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ride it, though. Wow, Daddy has a bike and never rides it. Interesting. I'll, I'll log that away for later. <laughs> <laughs> Oil pulling. Ever heard mm. of it? It's a thing that you should do every single morning. I do it every morning. As soon as I wake up, first thing I do, I walk to the pantry, pull it out, get a spoonful of uh of uh, coconut oil, put it in my mouth, swish it around 20 minutes while I do the dishes, while I put the dishes away, while I do my clothes master French. First thing you want to do, you know, something that, as soon as you wake up, your mind is in like that low, whatever the word is, yes. like that low frequency state. Yes. And so you don't have much going on. Yeah. And so you can, it, it really helps to like do whatever you're wanting to learn first thing in the morning. Right. After you exercise. Yeah. Or right when you're about to go to sleep. And that's how you can really remember stuff. Or after a cold shower. Okay. That can help that you That makes sense, too. Um, Oil pulling really is... Uh as soon as I feel a little sick or if I uh, yeah. feel something in my ear or mouth pain at all, that's the first thing I do is just put some coconut oil yeah. in my mouth. It's very and just swish nice. it around, and then don't don't spit out in the sink. You'll uh, you gotta yeah. spit out in the trash. Yeah, can. in trash can. Don't swallow that. <laughs> yeah, don't swallow it either. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my recommend. I do it every day. You can just do it when you're sick. Uh, also, gargle with apple cider vinegar. That helps. That really. I, if you do those two things together, yes. like I would do oil pulling, and then I would do gargle with apple cider vinegar. I feel like I'm a new human. This is look. Consult your doctor. <laughs> but when you feel a cold coming on, this is how I beat a cold, and I'm, I'm sure Jordan too, in 24 to 48 hours every time. This is what you do. You wake up in the morning. The first thing you do is hop in the shower. Ha Maybe yours is going to be a little different than mine. This is what well, I do. I'm curious. Hack out as much crud as you can. The first thing you do, get as much of it out as you can. Then get out of the shower. Then gargle with apple cider vinegar. Just gargle it, spit it out. Do that a few times. Then, once you have properly cleared yourself of all this stuff, then drink some apple cider vinegar. Oh, yeah. And on top of that, get yourself some kind of like coldy zinc lozenge type yeah. thing to up your zinc levels. Um, next day, feel better. <laughs> and, then, and then just rest. And then just and rest. Then rest, yeah. That's how you get over a cold in a day. Yes. G give it no chance. And if that There's doesn't, not. what I said doesn't sound fun to me, fun to you, then you're not properly devoted. Enjoy yeah. your cold. You're not Enjoy properly you devoted you, to it. You won't do what's right. You, you <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine uh, recently said uh, he, uh, he had lost a bunch of weight. Okay. And uh, another one of our friends said to him, what did you do to lose the weight? And he said to him, Everyone knows how to lose weight. Nobody wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is so true. That is That's so awesome. true. Um, you know what? My recommend is also something uh, that you do early in the morning, and that is go on Netflix and watch American Murder, The Family Next Door. Dude, this was a documentary I just happened across. One of the trippiest things I've ever seen. Did you hear about that guy hmm. of like 
six years ago in Colorado who just straight up just like murdered his wife and his kids um, and they just dumped their bodies like out in the desert. Doesn't happen like every day here these days. Uh, this was especially egregious. Okay. Because he was like, he was there. Like when a friend of hers reported her missing and then he just comes home and is like, yeah, I don't know where she is. I don't know. He, oh, so so weird. they have all this body cam footage of like right after it happened. He's just like acting like, I don't, I don't know where my wife is. After like hours after he had killed wow, her. Wow, yeah, that's And crazy. the kids. So anyways, I wouldn't normally like recommend these. American Murder Family. Yeah, story. like I just, I just heard about this story and then I heard there was a Netflix thing about it and I was like, well, let me just pull up. And I'm glad I did because there's no, there are no interviews. There's no narration. It's literally just body cam and then um in, uh, when they were conducting the interrogations and stuff and then news footage that's all there is there's no, nobody narrating the story so you really feel like you're a, you're a fly on the wall just hearing this story firsthand it was really really interesting that's actually kind of interesting this is like an hour and a half and you get this. so i watched like 20 minutes of it every morning uh until i just finished it actually this morning so uh yeah i mean super Dark, you know, you gotta have a stomach for this stuff. It was very sad. That's how you do an episode. It's done. All done. And this was the last episode on the Blind Macau channel. There we go. And now you will have to go and subscribe to Blind Macau Podcast at Blind Macau Podcast. At Blind Macau Podcast. That's where it's gonna live now. We'll, we'll see how it. We see. We'll see what it becomes over there. We will. We're excited. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you over there next week. Not on here. Goodbye.